I, I enjoy being out on the canoe. I mean, being out on the water. And I, I don't get to canoe anywhere near as much as I'd, I'd like to. And I started canoeing quite late in life. I was introduced to canoeing not a great many years ago, to be honest with you. Uh, I've, I've paddled a few times over over my life, but ne nothing towards on a regular basis. And the more and more I get out of my canoe these days, uh, the more benefit I, I get from it. I think canoeing is a wonderful thing. It gives you a, a deep respect for the landscape, being able to see it from a, a different perspective, seeing the wildlife that's by the water's edge from the waters uh, that you paddle across is, is a wonderful thing also. It's, a, it's a, an amazing way to travel through the landscape efficiently and, and quickly and carrying more equipment which then, you know, if you're on a, a longer trip you can be comfortable for longer because you can take more food, more items of clothing or, or such or, um, you know, we, we still have very, you know, few tools that you need uh, the basics, you know, a knife, an axe, a saw, with the with the right amount of skills, uh, woodcraft skills, bushcraft skills, that can allow you to stay in, in the wilderness for longer periods of time. And that's something that I want to do more and more over the years as well. I was fortunate enough that I found a good school in the north of England and my life was forever changed from that moment on. They taught a good ethos and respect for the outdoors as well and I learned track and sign skills and basic bushcraft and woodcraft skills as well as much as you can do in a, a sort of foundation bushcraft course if you will and then I quickly fell in love with it everything had changed. The way that I walked through the woods and looked at the, the woodland had changed. The way that I could see footprints and start to follow those prints and then started working on trailing skills and things like that. And then very soon after I'd sort of started to learn these things that I could almost read things differently within the woods and you could see where a game trail was or where a rabbit had been and then you find fox prints behind the rabbit and then you see the rabbit take off and then the, the fox follow the rabbit or, so you, you instantly you see that there was a hunt ensued and either there was a kill site at the end of it or the rabbit got away or the fox had found something or was disturbed and the more I saw those things the more I wanted to see more and learn more skills and I wanted to learn proper skills so that I could spend more time in the wild for longer periods and be more comfortable whilst I was there and confident and I guess that kind of grew from there.
I like to read the landscape. I like to read the woodland floor. I like to look for plants and animals and, and see where they've been and see, almost read the, the woods as a, a newspaper, if you will. You know, you, you find a plant that you've been reading up about or a fungi that you haven't seen before or, you know, and I, I always take a notebook with me and a, a pen and paper and things and I, I write down where I find such plants or, or fungi. So the following year or years, I, I, I go back to those areas and I try and see what sort of uh, time of year that those appear again. And that's my hobby. <laughs> that's, that's what I like to do. I like to, to hunt for, for mushrooms or fungi and, and the various plants and things and, and work on those skills. That's what bushcraft is, I, I believe, and, and that's what I enjoy. That's what I enjoy the most about my time outdoors. And, um, and I enjoy sharing that with people as well. And, you know, when you see somebody else find something for the first time, that's, that's special as well, because you, you know what that feeling's like, you know, that enjoyment, that passion that somebody else has also, you know. That's what I enjoy. And I think that's why I started the journal. One of the reasons was that I knew how much enjoyment I got out of being taught and learning bushcraft skills, you know, real skills that give you an understanding of nature and the outdoors. And I wanted to share that with people as well. You know, I wanted to, to produce something or be part of something that produced a source of information where Anybody from a complete beginner to a, somebody who's just a recreational outdoorist or a, a more seasoned veteran to bushcraft related skills could pick a magazine up and, it, and it'd be a source of information that anybody can, can gain from. The Bushcraft Journal's great because it covers a wide range of skills and, and knowledge from, from outdoor professionals from around the world. From newer people who are, you know, running schools that, you know, have been going five, ten years to people who have been involved within teaching bushcraft related skills for, you know, 30 plus years. We take everything into account, you know, skills around Tree identification, plant identification, knife skills, knots, wood preparation, food preparation, animals, canoeing. We cover all sorts within the journal, and that's that's that was my goal originally was to have a, a wide selection of skills and subjects that people can you know from from whatever their interest is, they can approach the subject and either you know, have something to read on everything or continue along their journey. So if it was plant identification, they can pick an article that covers plants or food or wild food cooking and all those kind of things. Uh, if it was trees, there's all about trees in there and woodcraft skills, things that they can make whilst they're in the woods to carving it, for instance. Uh, yeah, it's a, having a vast, wide variety from how-tos to stories about people's expeditions and their travels to that you know and, and they want to encourage other people to do travels and and see this wonderful world that we live in uh, rather than just watching things on youtube and, <laughs> and and sitting by a tv screen actually encouraging people to get out there and, and see the places and, and get involved with nature and learning new skills yeah, the Bushcraft Journal covers a vast variety of, of skills and knowledge-based subjects that people want to learn whilst in the outdoors. One of my goals originally was to, to make a resource for people around the world 
to be able to access and learn subjects from, learn skills from and I recommend going on courses and finding the good people, the, the good schools within, within the country to, to learn those skills from and, and invest money there. And I also wanted to create something that was a supplement with that so that after you've been on those courses and, and, and such you can, you can read articles from, from instructors from around the world, from the instructors who were on the course that you learned from and learn various skills from them throughout the magazine. You know, the goal was always to, to have a resource for people and the best resource that's on the market as well. You know, that was the whole goal, was to be the best magazine that covers bushcraft on the market. We, we use a, a leave no trace mentality in, in the world of bushcraft, or most of us do, is that you know you want to leave a campsite as you found it, as if you've never been there, or as near to that as possible. You can never 100% leave absolutely no trace. There's always trace of human activity or animal activity or whatever activity, unless we float by, but it's, I'm talking about cleaning up after yourself after your campfire, making sure there's no fire scar, there's no chopped down trees or litter or upturned turf just left there. Put things back the way that it was found, you know. Have a bit of intelligence about what you do when you're out there so that it leaves it better for the next person or that has a, at least a little impact on the land as possible.